you're here with Jackson with Lethal Racing. And uh, what better day, you know, to sit here and enjoy a nice March day, 50 degree weather. Why don't we uh, untarp these derby cars? I got one already ready to rock and roll, but uh, my pride and joy, my first car ever. And uh, it's time we get it out. We gotta get the motor pulled. And we so this car is a chain and band car. Uh, I ran it in Preston, Idaho, and I've ran it in Blackfoot, Idaho, and that's where it's going to continue to go. Now, like I said, this car is my first car. It was my first one ever, and it's got a lot of sentimental. A lot of people have those ones things in their life that they're attached to. Well, I'm attached to this thing, and uh, so I'll do a slight walk around, kind of give you an idea of what a chain and band car is. And for guys who've been doing this for years, obviously you guys will know, um, I'm not no professional by no means. Um, this will be my second year driving um, and my second year building my own stuff. And so I'm very entry level, but I feel like I understand a good portion of what I'm doing. So, so to save you all the grief from doing the whole listening to the tarp and whatnot, um, this is a Ford 400 and I like it. I mean, I've had no issues with it. Um, most people don't like Ford motors. I don't know why. I mean, I know, yeah, parts are a little expensive, but they're really not that bad. But I've, I'm a Ford guy. I ain't gonna dog on no Mopar or Chevy, you know, any GM products or any Mopar products. I mean, every motor is good for whatever the case may be, but I'm a Ford guy and probably gonna stay that way. So without further ado, this is a 1978 Lincoln Continental. Like I said, it's gone through two derbies and it doesn't look like it's gone through much, but I mean, it definitely has. This is the second bump we had on it. Um, that's got nothing crazy done to it. I've got a HEI distributor on it. It did have a Edelbrock 4012 carb on it, aftermarket, uh, ignition coil, you know, whatnot. These are deck headers. Um, fun fact, these are actually <laughs> collectors flipped upside down. Um, they look kind of stupid. I'll put a picture on it of what they look like before I cut them. I mean, they don't look terrible now, but I am not a fan of them no more. Um, we've got a flexible radiator hose. I don't run a fan, which is going to change really soon. Um, so this bumper, you know, you can bend rules. You're supposed to have four inches of weld on each side. Um, I won't lie. There's a little bit more weld, but I needed it because I this car had a reputation for knocking bumpers off. And it wasn't other people's. It was my own. Um, so chain and bang. I mean, you can read the rules. But, I mean, literally, rather than welding up, you chain up. So I've got chains all the way across. You know, and we thought we'd have fun with this car. I mean, every derby has to have a cop car. Um, those are functioning cop lights that come off of a 80s cop car. You know, if you guys are a Transformers fan, you know where that logo's from, from Barricade. And obviously, you gotta have to punish and enslave. It's just kind of what you gotta do. So, this is my battery box, all mounted in there, nonchalant. Everything's ran through the firewall like it's supposed to. My BM shifter, push button start, and whatnot most uncomfortable seat I've ever had in my lifetime. There you go. Um, this cage is not gnarly. I think it's simple either. It could have got done a lot better. But for the first time, I don't think it's too bad. And I really didn't know how to notch. So we kind of just makeshift made it work. And as you'll see, it got a little beat up. And of course, 
course, you've got to have the American flag on there because America. But if you look, it's a little rough. I was going to fix a plate, just trying to hold that thing together. We are trying to have it bend up, but obviously we did it wrong. And that's all right. I mean, being a first timer, it's just how shit goes. Now, am I proud of this car? I am more than proud of it. And that's all there is to it. Now, if you take a good look, that passenger side crush box is bent. I hit a guy where I shouldn't have, and I own it, but it's a little tweaked right down in there, so I've got to pull the motor out and put my tire right into my wheel well. You know, tucked everything back, screwed that up, rolled my fender up. You know, nothing really significant happened here, but it's got to get fixed. So that's going to be the what we're going to do. We're going to fix it, get it taken care of, and hope for the best. Now, people wonder, like, why waste money on this stuff? You know, yes, it is just a hobby. Yes, it is expensive. Yes, it is time consuming. But there's a certain level of adrenaline that you get in these cars. I mean, for me personally, I freak out, I shake. It looks like I'm having a damn seizure. But I wouldn't change it for the world. It's the most fun. I mean, you got good guys. And it's, I don't know, it's just an experience that maybe one of these days we can uh, get somebody else in the car and let them live the experience a little bit but until then i'm gonna keep enjoying so for right now I, we, we're just running two cars this year um i've got a 72 t-bird and then i'm gonna run the 78 continental again and hopefully i can finish it off this year get it scrapped out get that metal out of there um and hey, put on a good show i mean that's the the whole point about this is putting on a show and and uh letting people have a good night as well as us you know and obviously a little money in the pocket don't hurt either so if you do it just right but for me i've got four cars i'm working on a fifth i've had access to a lot more cars but i don't need them and it doesn't help that my girlfriend doesn't like that i have a lot of cars so I guess five is a good number. So um, I've got two 72, two 72s and two 78s. And that just kind of happened. That was just luck in all honesty. But I mean, nothing's really crazy. Nothing, nothing's overbuilt. One has a 460, this one has a 400 and I've got a 302. Um, nothing crazy. I mean, I'll show you the cage in my other 78. That one was a little bit more time consuming. We were on a time crunch and it was definitely underbuilt. And to say the absolute least, they got my ass handed to me. And it was a great learning lesson nonetheless. Also, don't mind the voice. I'm getting over a head cold and it's been absolutely brutal. But you know, we're out here, we're still going. I have no time to stop. I got nothing to do. I mean, we got back-to-back -back derbies. I've got teams all the way across from Southern Utah all the way up into Idaho. When I say team, I'm all my drivers. And so we got to get cars out. We got to get them crack-a-lacking, and that's what we're going to do.